Hey everyone, it's Brennan. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. Today I'm doing a 24 hour readathon. Um, I'm off tomorrow. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve and I have a Christmassy book. I have a couple more wintry Christmassy books I want to read before Christmas Day. So I figured I might as well do a nice little reading vlog while I'm doing this and I've never done like a 24 hour readathon top vlog before and I think it sounds fun. There's also, I learned recently there are things called reading sprints where a bunch of booktubers just kind of get together and live stream. I've never been to one before but um, Books Past Bedtime, I think her name is Jess, she's hosting one tonight at 9. Right now it is 7.30. So She's hosting one at 9 with Caroline Johnson, who I've been watching a lot of, and Chandler from Chandler Ainsley, who is um, one of the first booktubers I started watching. So they're doing a reading sprint tonight, and it's something that's like, I think they'll just like chat a while, and then they'll like read for 20 minutes, and you like can read with them. I don't know, but... I am interested to attend this tonight and see what's going on, but let's get into the books I want to read and complete over these next 24 hours. My main focus is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This is a new release from them. It came out a couple months ago, but now is the time to read it. If I don't read this right now, then I'm not going to read it until next year. So, this book is, it's just over 300 pages. I think it's like 303 pages. Um, this is a, I believe the characters are in their mid-twenties. And it's a romance set around Christmas time. And it has like a Groundhog Day kind of theme. Where I think this girl and some friends, some like childhood friends, I'm not sure, have gone to a cabin to spend the holidays and then after the holidays are over they find out that, that that cabin is being sold and then I think they are driving back to the airport and like reminiscing and then they're in an accident and then she enters into this holiday groundhog day she enters into a holidays which is very I don't want to call it hallmark because Christina Lauren's romances are usually pretty steamy or not hallmark-esque but I've heard pretty good things about this book so far. Um, so I plan to read this entirely in the next 24 hours. And then I also want to complete the Kindle book I'm reading right now. And it is called One Day in December by Josie Silver. I think obviously I'll insert it here. I'm about 55, 60% through this book. I think I have, it's 400 pages and I'm on page 250 or so but I'm liking it so far it is such a also if you hear clicking Nick is over here playing wow but it's so real like okay let me tell you what it's about so we start out following our main character Lori she's our main female character and she's coming home from work one day on the bus this is set in London um, so she's coming home from work one day and she sees a guy at a bus stop and they make this eye contact and it's like they're drawn to each other but then the bus leaves and then she doesn't see him again and she spends the next year of her life basically looking for him kind of passively not really like going out of her way to look for him but she just has this boy on her mind and she just wants to find him well she does find him when her very best friend and flatmate Sarah introduces him to her as her new boyfriend. So they have quite the interesting friendship triangle that ensues. Um, but this book is, I believe it's going to span over 10 years, which I really enjoy in a book, especially in fantasy books. I really like to see a long timeline be played out. So I'm really enjoying it in this romance. Um, but we're just following these characters in their lives and their successes and their failures and their trials um, and just their lives. And it's quite realistic, 
like I feel like you know with Christina Lauren they can have rom commy stuff in their books which isn't truly real real life but this book is quite real life um and I'm enjoying it um so I plan to finish it I'll read the last 150 pages or so of it and then I also want to finish my audiobook I'm listening to, which is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is the first book in her Winter Knot? Winter Knot? Yeah, her Winter Knot trilogy. This is a Russian inspired. So far, I don't really. I am the worst at telling if something is young adult or new adultish or completely adult. But I, right now, I think I would call this young adult. But it definitely has some mature themes. But some young adult can vary from like the almost middle grade feel to the hinging on adult feel. So I'm just going to call this young adult. And, you know, we'll see. Leave me a comment if you know exactly what this should be called. But I have about... When I'm listening to the audiobook on 1.6 speed, it tells me that I have three hours left. So, I also plan to finish that book within this reading vlog. I don't know if I'll start another audiobook or not. If I do, I don't have it picked out. <laughs> but, uh, okay, The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden is a Russian-inspired fantasy. I believe it is, like, loosely set, set around 15, 1600s Russia. And our main character's name is Vasya. This isn't told directly from anyone's perspective, but we watch as Vasya's family goes about living their lives in the wintry, snowy forest in northern Russia. Um, I think the other books in the series may get more into like Moscow and different places within Russia, but this first book, we follow Vasya. This book starts before she's born. And now where I'm at in the book, she's probably about 15 years old. Another book that has spanned quite the long time period. And I'm enjoying that about it. But Vasya's mother died and her father remarried. And when Vasya's stepmother came to their woods, she's very, um, I don't know if they're Catholic, but just Christianized. And the spirits were the like, woodsy spirits and protectors where Vasya lives are clashing heads with the new Christianity that's coming to their area. And I believe there's going to be some kind of like war almost between, I don't know who exactly it's going to be between, but um, the like spirit protectors of her land are I don't think they're necessarily dying. I'm still learning a lot about this world. And what's going on in it. I don't know if that has explained anything. Vasya as a character is so so incredible. She like is really good at riding horses and she likes to do more of the typical like boyish stuff but she definitely has society's expectations for a woman on her. Right now her family is just trying to get her married off or sent to a convent before she can cause too much trouble and stir up too much in their very regimented and traditional world. So that is also very good. And if I finish these books, then I'm just going to pick up Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson and continue it. I'm on page 742 out of 1217. So making good progress. I'm over halfway done with this and it's so good if you're interested in more thoughts about it, I will link my previous vlog where I started reading this. So this is just a contingent book. If I finish this physical book, then I will pick up this physical book and keep going. But I have no, no uh, hopes of reading these last 600, 500 some pages. 400, I'm, listen, I've math is math, you know, uh, but I don't intend to finish this in this reading vlog, um, but I might touch on it some. Okay, so like I said, it's about, okay, now it's 7.40. I've talked to you for 10 minutes. I'm going to start in a holidays. I'll probably start it at 
and then this vlog will end at 7.45 tomorrow, and I'll wrap up everything that I read. And in the meantime, I will take you with me on Christmas Eve Eve, which is tonight, into Christmas Eve, which is tomorrow. We are having a low-key Christmas on our own this year. Um, so I'm just going to relax, enjoy the season, and read tomorrow. I might try to film a video, and I probably need to go to the grocery store for a little quick last minute trip. And then I have a pecan pie, so maybe I'll make a pecan pie. I got it from work, thanks Morrison. Uh, so I may make that and just do Christmassy things. I'll have uh, some presents to wrap for Nick also. I'm gonna hang out with these cats, hang out with Nick and hang out with my books. And in about an hour and 15 minutes, I'm gonna hang out with some booktubers and just see what these reading sprints are about. Caroline Johnson and her, I'll link it below, but it was her like how I read 100 plus books in a year video. And she talked about them and how they help her like read a lot all at once. So that's what I'm using the sprint tonight for, to help me read a lot of my book. This one that I'm starting out with tonight, but I will check in with you as I read some of these books. I'll let you know how they're going. So stick around. spooky it is like almost midnight and I'm still awake I'm like never up this late but I just wanted to update you before I go to bed that I've read 100 plus pages like it's like 103 pages of um in holidays by Christina Lauren and it's it's okay so far also Gizmo's really needy for attention it's okay so far um it's snowy they're in like a cabin in utah so the setting is fantastic it's great um they have done christmas things like build they had like a snowman building competition so far so that was wintry but um our our main female character her name is maylin she is still coming to grips with the fact that she's having to relive the same christmas vacation over and over again until she does something right and she doesn't know what it is yet that she's supposed to do right. This cat loves bedtime. She lives for it. She just wants people to go to bed all the time so she can climb under the covers. So she's being very needy. <coughs> yes. Also, we took them to the vet yesterday. We took them to the vet yesterday and Gizmo has been a little like sneezy and like a little congested feeling. So uh, the vet recommended that we humidify the, uh, the apartment some. So now Gizmo has two humidifiers, don't you? There's one over here. I don't know if you can see it. There's her bedroom humidifier. And then she also has one in, like, the kitchen living area. So, she spoiled it, didn't she? <laughs> but, yes, this book is fine so far. It's good. Um, this is just, like, an early book thought 
I should, I mean, like, I'm a third of the way into the book at page 100. But, um, so there's a character in it. His name's Benny. So I should say, this girl goes to her, her family friend's cabin every Christmas season with her parents and, like, some of her parents' best friends and their children. And the love interest is all obviously going to be one of her parents' friends' children who she has grown up with. He's 29 now and she's 26. And this is kind of like their last chance to have a romance together. But this is like the more dark, intense romance reader in me. But there's another character and he is her parents' friend from college who is like this Australian hippie just kind of go with the flow guy and he's kind of like her best friend type character who she bounces her problems off of and he's the one that she keeps going back to and it, like explaining what's happening to her and like he helps her sort through her problems but I kind of wish he was the... I kind of wish he was her love interest. I think that would be a little more interesting. I don't know. Um, also, but I will say her actual love interest, the way he keeps being described, he, um, he reminds me... Should I be holding the book up while I'm doing this? Um, he is reminding me of Barnes Courtney, who I'll insert a picture of. But uh he's like he likes music and right now he's just like working at Red Rocks in Colorado doing like sound stuff. But he's actually like a pretty talented musician and she keeps talking about his like brunette curls falling onto his forehead and I don't know. I just, it's giving me, I'm just picturing him as Barnes Courtney, which is fine with me, but that's my evening update for you. I'm going to go to sleep and then I have to run to the grocery store quickly in the morning and then I will read some more and maybe I'll finish this book. It probably won't take me but two or three more hours to finish this book, um, but yeah, it's fine so far. Gizmo signing off. She's gonna go to bed. I'm gonna go to bed. And I'll see you tomorrow. Merry Christmas Eve. Quick update. It's snowing. Let me show you beautiful amazing we love it snowing through my jungle of plants here Prissy's enjoying it but I have like maybe no not even 100 pages left maybe probably like 60 70 pages left of my first book in Holidays by Christina Lauren. It's on the couch where I've been reading. And I was just making a quick lunch. Nick was making some hamburger and I wanted to capitalize on that and make some spaghetti because I'm craving it right now. But it's Christmas Eve. I Zoomed with my family for a little bit today. That was fun. I have a Christmassy sweater on with a cat that looks like Gizmo. Um, but I'm going to keep reading and I need to wrap Nick's presents. Have not done that yet. And I want to, I'm going to make macaroni and cheese and stuffing and a turkey and mashed sweet potatoes for tomorrow for Christmas Day. So I'm going to probably get the mac and cheese together at least tonight and maybe chop up the stuff for my stuffing. Chop up the stuff for my stuffing. So I'm just going to keep at it. It is, it's a little later. It's almost four o'clock so I only have um three hours left of this readathon I've been doing but I've been enjoying in the holidays definitely like once we got to learn more about her love interest I like them as a couple so far um 
but I'm gonna keep going and I will update you when I'm done have not touched my Kindle book have not touched my audiobook but you know here we are and if I read one whole book in this 24-hour period that's fine too I'm not gonna be hard on myself on Christmas Eve but I'm just enjoying my day Chrissy's enjoying her day she's actually been kind of mean since we went to the vet a couple days ago she's been like a little growly and hissy but she's okay right now she's just being a little territorial but check back in with you soon hello hello i'm here to wrap up this vlog full transparency it's a couple days later it is now december 29th and i did this vlog over christmas eve so I'm sorry, it's a few days later, I got busy with the holidays, but I read the entirety of In a Holidays by Christina Warren. This was good, I it was nothing special to me, but it was a fun holiday rom-com type romance. Gizmo apparently really liked it. Um, I read this in less than 24 hours. I think I finished this. I'm not even sure what my last update was in that 24-hour readathon. Um, but I read the entirety of this. It was 304 pages. And then I listened to, I finished it with like an hour and a half left. And then I listened to an hour and a half of my audiobook, which was The Bear and the Nightingale by Katherine Arden. This is the first book in her Winter Night trilogy, and I've since finished it. I also kind of wanted to just have more books to talk about with you all. Um, sorry, I'm like holding my camera. I finished it recently, and it was so, so good. I gave it five stars. It is a Russian-inspired, I would call definitely this first book more young adult, just because Vasya, our main character, she starts out the story, okay, well, the story starts and she hasn't even been born yet. And then, like, she's growing up some. There's quite a bit of focus on her when she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I Gizmo, I whacked her in the face. Um, when she's like six ish. And then, in the end of this first book, she's probably about 15 or 16. So, that's really the only reason I would call it young adult, is because our character is a teenager, mainly through this first book. Did you just hear that? Gizmo whacked a little she just okay she wants some camera time she just wants some lovin's okay so this is a young adult russian inspired fantasy i've heard it is loosely based around like actual 15 1600s russia and this first book mainly takes place in the remote woods of northern russia and Vasya's village is visited by well one her stepmother comes to live with their family and she is um i don't want to she's devout i guess but she's devout because she sees demons but vasya also sees demons but she knows that they are i hesitate to call them demons they're not demons they are like folklore spirits that protect their village and protect their homes and when vasya's stepmom and a priest, not priest, I guess he is. They call him father, so I guess he is. Um, they come and they start to instill some fear into the people of Vasya's village. And when these people stop giving their tributes, I guess, to these more traditional folklore spirits, um, some bad stuff starts happening and the people get really scared and this other being that kind of feeds on fear is rising up, kind of coming out of a slumber because of this. And Vasya has to save them. But also, a big theme of this is kind of like women's expected roles in these very, I don't even, medieval, I don't, I hesitate to say medieval because I don't know the exact time periods of medieval eras. Okay, but it's very, she is really challenging their views of women. Like there was one quote and it's like, Vasya, the cage you see yourself in is just women's lot in life. And she's like, well, it's not my lot in life. And oh, it's just, it was so, so good. Um, 
Also, if you've read the series, let me know. Let me know what you think about it. But me, after reading this first book, I'm totally shipping Vasya and Morosco. Morosco? Morosco. Um, that's another... I'm so glad that I listened to this audiobook because there are so many Russian names and I really appreciate them being read to me versus me just looking at them and skimming over them quickly on a page, which I probably would have done. Um... But yes, it was so good. I finished it yesterday, and I started the second book already this morning, which is The Girl in the Tower? The Woman in the Tower? I think it's The Girl in the Tower. And I, I mean, like, I've listened to 20 minutes of it, maybe. Uh, so yes, uh, also, I didn't read this any in my 24-hour reading sprint, but I also finished also finished One Day in December by Josie Silver, which was good. It was so, like, normally dramatic. Like, just such normal, everyday problems. And this is another book that spanned nine years, ten years. And just seeing these characters go through trials and triumphs and new jobs and family changes and deaths and things like that. It was just so dramatic but just in such a normal way just normal life drama uh but it was really good too i gave it four stars um i'll talk more about all these books in my december wrap-up but here you go thanks for watching this vlog that i was kind of hoping to get up like on christmas day but here we are it's fine and let me know if you want to see more short little I don't I hesitate to call this short right now I'm looking and I've been talking for seven minutes but let me know if you want more 24 hour little spurts of uh reading a few books but thank you for watching give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next one